Another tactic used by Answers in Genesis to deceive their followers is the application of what they call operational science to their theory that the Earth is only 6,000 years old. Operational science was invented by young Earth creationists mainly because real science, called origin science or historical science, tells us that the universe is billions of years old. As you will see in this video, the attempt to explain this new young earth science is deceitful, confusing, and contradictory. You will see how this new science, invented by young earth creationists, is just another attempt to deceive their followers into believing the earth is only 6,000 years old. Operational science is based on experimentation and observation. It's, it's real science. It's repeatable and testable. So if it's the kind of thing we could go to a laboratory and test this idea, that's operational science. Compare that with, or contrast that with, origin science, which is an attempt to use scientific circumstantial evidence to reconstruct the past. Basically, in origin science, you're asking a history question, and you're trying to use science to solve it. And for that reason, origin science is weaker than operational science, because you can't test it in a laboratory. Here, Jason Lyle is setting his young audience up in much the same manner as any good salesman by establishing several facts that will be later confirmed by other evidence that he will present. This is called backwards confirmation. He has established two falsehoods. One, that his young earth science is repeatable and testable and based on experimentation. And two, that origins science is circumstantial. His third assertion, that origin science is weaker than operational science is proclaimed as fact. Jason Lyle then attacks origins science, the standard used by real scientists. He states the following. Some of the characteristics of, or of origin science. Like I said, it lacks testability. The past is gone. It cannot be observed or repeated. This makes origin science less powerful and more error prone than operational science. So that's something that you have to keep in mind when you're hearing about the latest theory. Uh, origin science is highly sensitive to biases, especially biases about the past, right? I mean, a person's view of history is going to affect their interpretation of the evidence in the present, especially if they have a different view of history than I do, right? If, if, if a person is saying, okay, I believe this particular view of history, so I'm interpreting these events happened in the past. See, it makes a difference what they believe about the past. Origin science is really an attempt to answer a history question using science, but history questions are better answered by consulting a history book if one's available. Here, Lyle states that origin science depends on the past, and since the past is gone, it cannot be observed. Therefore, it cannot be trusted. Lyle's third point here is setting his audience up for the final blow, his scheme to convince his audience that a history book is necessary to determine history and his history book is the Bible, which he interprets completely differently than most other Bible scholars. His next example of how origin science works will demonstrate the ridiculousness of his argument against real science. Let me give you an example of this. If I, if I found a button from George Washington's shirt, and I send this in and have it radiometrically dated, and suppose I get that the, the age of the button, according to various forms of radiometric dating, is 3.7 million years. And I say, well, George Washington lived 3.7 million years ago. Would any of you believe that? I would hope you would reject that right out of hand, right? That can't be right. You know from history that George Washington didn't live that long ago. You see how history is superior to scientific guesswork when it comes to reconstructing the past? And so it is with the age of the Earth. This man is supposed to be a scientist, which means he's intelligent. So his statements here have to be calculated. The experiment he is describing never occurred. If the button had been tested, it would not have resulted in an age of 3.7 million years old. Yet his audience has been convinced of these false facts and have been prepared for the only logical solution to determining the age of the button, a history book. This entire procedure is setting his audience up to believe that his history book, the Bible, is the answer to all scientific experimentation. This is how operational science works. Lyle then attempts to destroy real science by his next statement that the Bible contradicts origin science. We could take a rock and, and send it into a laboratory and, and people say, oh, that's, that's 4.5 billion years old. Well, wait a minute, 
I have a history book that says the earth isn't that old, you see. History is superior when it comes to answering a, a history question. So Jason Lyle has set his audience up using the technique of backwards confirmation simply by asserting that the Bible can be trusted to contradict radiometric dating of rocks in much the same manner as was proven in the experiment with George Washington's button. But Jason Lyle is violating one of the rules he condemns in Origin Science, that a person's view of history strongly affects his or her interpretation. Jason's distorted interpretation of what the Bible teaches about the age of the earth has distorted his conclusion. Jason Lyle then promotes his young earth invention, operational science. Operational science is very powerful. It converges to truth because it's testable. And what I mean by that is, if I have a scientific, an operational scientific theory that's wrong, eventually it'll be exposed to be wrong, because somebody will do an experiment in a laboratory and they'll show it up for what it is. They'll show that it's wrong. And so that, for that reason, operational science is very powerful. It tends to come to truth very quickly. Lyle's claim here is that operational science is more reliable because data can be tested in the laboratory, and at that time can be determined to be true or false. He then claims that young earth science is less susceptible to preconceived ideas or biases. But at the same time, he dismisses radiometric dating, even though he states that operational science is more reliable because it can be tested. But it's much less sensitive to historical biases. Okay, if I tell you that I believe in gravity, we can test gravity, can't we? We can do it in the present. I can drop something. And presumably it shouldn't matter whether you believe in creation or evolution. You should agree with me that gravity exists and that it pulls things down because it's something we can test in the present. And so you see how it's less sensitive to uh, one's view of history. Jason Lyle has again used an example that is totally irrelevant to the idea he is trying to convey. It is used simply because it is an indisputable fact that gravity exists. And Lyle wants to connect that indisputable fact with his theory of operational science. And the young audience will make that connection in their young minds and conclude that young earth science cannot be disputed. Jason Lyle then informs his audience that operational science was invented by young earth creationists and is based on biblical truths. Jason is making it clear to his audience that the Bible is his history book. Operational science is a creationist concept. Do you realize that? Do you realize that operational science, the foundation for that is the Bible? The idea that there is a lawgiver, right? The, the universe has laws because there is a lawgiver. And we can study those laws and, and understand the universe because God made us to be able to do that. We can now understand why the George Washington history book is more important than the dating method on George Washington's button. Jason Lyle is now presenting the Bible as his authoritative foundation for young earth science. No one is going to argue that the Bible is the ultimate authority. Therefore, all other facts presented here by Lyle are allegedly true. Ken Ham, Jason Lyle, and all other young earth creationist leaders constantly accuse old earth believers of allowing their preconceived ideas to interfere with their belief that the earth is billions of years old. But they have invented a science that allows them to do that very thing. Jason Lyle concludes his lecture with two facts. One, that operational or young earth science is reliable and we can be confident in the results. Two, that origin science is unreliable, we should be skeptical of the results, and the results are flawed by preconceived opinions. So this is just something to keep in mind. Operational science, very powerful. We can have a lot of confidence in it. Origin science, we should be very skeptical, we should be cautious, and we should look at the worldview of the person who's promoting these ideas. These two opinions are presented as indisputable facts to the audience who believes every word spoken by the teacher. But old earth creationists are the only group that combine biblical facts with true science in order to conclude that the universe is billions of years old. There is not one scripture that contradicts an old earth. That is, unless you twist the meaning of the scripture to fit into the young earth theory. And in order to believe our universe is only 6,000 years old, you have to dismiss every single piece of scientific evidence from all competent secular and Christian scientists that shows that our universe is billions of years old. So young earth leaders have devised a way to convince their followers that all of the old earth evidence is unreliable. 
First, they must convince their audience that there is a worldwide conspiracy amongst all scientists to deceive the world into believing that the universe is old. Second, they need to invent their own science and convince their followers that operational science is a reliable, tested method to determine scientific fact. When they use that term during their lectures, the audience assumes incorrectly that the scientific community is in agreement with their findings, but nothing could be further from the truth. It is impossible to use operational science to correctly determine that our Earth is only 6,000 years old unless the meaning of God's Word is modified. And that is why young Earth creationists use operational science to draw their conclusion. They use incorrect interpretations of biblical passages as data to input into their faulty science in order to produce completely unreliable results. On the other hand, origin science works much like a criminal investigation. During my career as a police detective, I pieced together conclusive facts based on circumstantial evidence. Most criminal suspects are convicted on circumstantial evidence because no one directly observed their crime. Just because I wasn't present to observe the crime doesn't mean I cannot reconstruct the facts. Let's take the subject of the fossil record we find in the earth today. Using origin science, I can conclude that dinosaurs existed on earth long before the creation of man 6,000 years ago. And dinosaurs and man did not coexist at the same time. For hundreds of years now, geologists have been digging up fossils from the earth. Scientists have uncovered millions of dinosaur fossils from huge seropods to tiny prehistoric insects. They have uncovered millions of marine dinosaurs, from large placoderms to the tiny Lariosaurus. But scientists have never found one fossil of a modern man, woman, child, chicken, goat, sheep, cow, elephant, giraffe, lion, bear, or any other modern-day creature. There are none in the fossil record. The logical conclusion is that modern-day animals and man were not present on this earth when the dinosaurs were destroyed. Next, scientists have conducted radiometric dating on the dinosaur bones. You hear young earth leaders constantly state that carbon-14 testing cannot determine the age of dinosaur remains. They are partially correct. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. After an organism has been dead for 60,000 years, there is no carbon-14 left to determine the age of the object. But we can tell that the object is at least 60,000 years old. If it was younger, there would be carbon-14 left to measure. In fact, carbon-14 tests done on Egyptian mummies have shown the near exact age of the remains, so carbon-14 testing does work. So dinosaur remains don't contain any carbon-14 radioactive isotopes. Scientifically, that proves that the dinosaur remains are older than 60,000 years. That evidence, combined with the fact that no modern-day creatures are found in the fossil record along with dinosaurs, demands the conclusion that dinosaurs existed before mankind and more than 60,000 years ago. This conclusion was reached using origin science. How can you possibly dismiss this scientific conclusion? Now we perform the same study using young earth science. According to Jason Lyle, there is one reason and one reason only that operational science would conclude that our findings on the fossil record are inaccurate. He stated that the foundation for operational science is the Bible. Because young earth leaders wrongly teach that the Bible tells us that dinosaurs were created 6,000 years ago and coexisted with men, then any other evidence is null and void. What we have shown here is the total hypocrisy of Ken Ham and Jason Lyle in promoting their young earth science when it is a simple way to deceive their followers. They have duped their movement into believing that real science confirms a universe that is only 6,000 years old, when real science has proven that our universe is billions of years old. And these people are not stupid. They know what they are doing. But they continue to spread the deceit. So where did dinosaurs come from? What happened to them? When did they live? I want to show you that when you take God at his word in the book of Genesis, that we can explain dinosaurs and observational science actually confirms that explanation based upon the Bible. Operational science is at least uh, potentially 
able to fit in with the clear teachings of Scripture.